Multiplication. Yoo-hoo! Hi there! You back and feeling fresh? Right oh then, let's get on with it! In this next part of the VCD, we are going to learn something new. Are you looking forward to it? Because we are going to learn about multiplication, folks! Yes, that's right! Multiplication! In multiplication, the number to be multiplied is written on the top and the number multiplying it is written below it. This is how we shall write it on a worksheet. But there is a most important thing that we must know before we learn how to multiply in our VCD. Yes, one very important thing and that is you must know the times table by heart from the 1 times table to the 9 times table all the way from 1 times 1 till 9 times 12. Once you are sure about how to multiply with single digits in the times table? Let's take a step forward and learn how to multiply a double digit with a single digit. Okay? This is 32 multiplied by 2. Or we can even say 32 times 2. That means 32 is increased two times. We get the answer by starting from the right again. Multiply 2 times 2 to get 4, which is written below the line. Next, multiply 3 by 2 to get 6. The answer is therefore 64. Got it? So let's go to the next one, shall we? This one is easy. Multiply 57 by 1. If you remember in your 1 times table that the answer of any number multiplied by 1 stays the same as that number. So, 57 times 1 is 57. That's so simple, wasn't it? Okay, let's get down to the nitty gritty. In the next part, we multiply a three digit number by a single digit like 110 times 9 is I am sure you remember that any number multiplied by 0 gives 0 as an answer so starting from the right 9 times 0 is what else but zero, which is written below the line? Then nine times one is nine. And again, nine times one is nine. One hundred and ten times nine is nine hundred and ninety. Wasn't that straightforward? Just the same as multiplying with a two-digit number, except here we have a third digit. If you need more practice with multiplication, remember to learn up your times tables and then 
play this CD-ROM in your computer where you can learn by punching in the numbers yourself. Now what happens in this case? Say 3 times 5 which is 15 and what if 3 is placed next to a 2 to make it a 23 as in 23 times 5. No problem, let's learn this together shall we? First multiply 5 into 3 to get 15. But now look carefully at what we do to the number 15. We have a carry over number in multiplication as well folks. Oh yes we have and it is used in the same way too. Isn't that convenient for us to learn faster? Like with addition the 5 goes down below the black line and the 1 is the carryover number which is placed above the number 2 as we can see happening here. Then we multiply 5 times 2 to get 10. Now look carefully my friends, the 10 gets added to the carryover number 1 to become 11 and 11 is written below the line. So, finally, the answer to 23 times 5 is 115. Did you get that? Remember, practice makes perfect and to practice problems of this type, we have just finished. We play the last section of this VCD. That was a very important section in multiplication we just learned. So let's take a breath for a moment. A deep breath. Stretch. Give me a big smile and pat ourselves on the back, okay? Okay now, let's go to the next part where we multiply with bigger numbers, all right? The same as in the previous section except that now we multiply a three digit number with a single digit. So let's multiply 345 by 4. Starting from the right, 4 fives are 20. Zero goes below carry over to now watch carefully folks because we don't want to trip over these calculations do we no way so four fours are 16 but before we do anything else we must add the carry over number so 16 plus 2 is 18 now 8 goes below carry over 1 then 4 threes are 12 again add 1 to 12 to get 13 so finally the answer to 345 times 4 is 1380 who <sighs> that was some nifty piece of multiplication work, wasn't it, folks? Practice it again to master it. In the next section, we shall multiply 34 by 52. What? Did you hear correctly? Multiplied by a two-digit number? But how is that possible? Can you guess? Well, here's how. Now, let's get back to multiplying 34 by 52. And you know what? We'll even be using addition 
to finish our calculation. Oh yes, addition with multiplication. This is a new and exciting challenge that we will overcome together, hand in hand. Okay, my dear friends? Okay, we're off! To complete this multiplication, we follow three steps. Two steps for each of the multiplying digits, five and two, and one last step for addition. In the first step, multiply 34 by two, and in the second step, multiply 34 by five. In the first step, starting from the right, two fours are eight, which is written below the line, below the number two. Next, two threes are six, which is again written below the line as seen here. Now, the first step is over, so let's move on to the second step. Look carefully, folks, because five, is a tens unit and not a ones unit. Its multiplication answer is written below the first answer and starts one place to the left. That's right folks, one place to the left. Watch the multiplication now. Starting from the right, five into four is 20. Zero is written below the first answer, one place to the left, as seen here. And the carryover number, two, is written above three. Next, five threes are 15. Add the carryover two, which gives 17. This is again written below the first answer. Now we have two answers. The answer of 34 times 2, which is 68, and 34 times 5, which is 170, written below the answer 68, but offset to the left by one place, because 5 is a tens unit. And the third and last step is to add the two numbers the way they are written in the worksheet. So eight plus nothing is eight. Six plus zero is six. And seven and one are written below the second black line. The total is 1,768, which is the answer of 34 times 52. Did you follow that? Wow! Don't you feel like an intelligent maths pro already? Practice, practice, practice. That's the maths mantra to perfection. So friends, if you want to be good at maths, that's what you need to do. Practice, practice, practice. To ensure that you stay clever, let's complete the last multiplication challenge problem, shall we? Let's multiply 736 by 61. Ooh, that seems like two big numbers. But never fear when Apu's here. We'll make it so much fun that we'll finish it before we know it. Like in the previous problems, let's start from the right, shall we? Remember the three steps. Step one is 736 times one. Step two is 736 times 6. Then in step 3, add the two answers in the special way we saw earlier. So starting from the right, 1 times
times 6 is 6, which goes below the black line. It's the same with 1 times 3 and 1 times 7, which give 3 and 7 respectively. The next step is to multiply 736 with 6. Starting from the right, 6 times 6 is 36. 6 goes below the first answer, offset one place to the left and 3 is carried over above 3. Got it? 3 is carried over above 3. Next, 6 3's are 18. Add carry over number 3 to get 21. As we saw earlier, 1 goes below the first answer next to the 6. Carry over 2 above 7. 6 times 7 is 42. Add carry over 2 to it to get 44. Since this is the last digit to the left, we write 44 to the left of 1 and 6. The answer of the first multiplication step was 736. The answer of the second multiplication step was 4416 written offset to the left. The last step is to add the numbers the way they are written. We get 6 plus nothing is 6. 3 plus 6 is 9. 7 plus 1 is 8. And both the 4s are written below the line. So, the final answer is 44,896. Good heavens, just look at that gigantic number, will you? This is a challenge truly overcome. You have done well. But like we say always, practice makes one perfect. So take up the challenge again if you wish to and win. It's break time, folks. If you need to, take a break before we go to the next and last section. Okay? Up, up and away we go!